Hello everyone and welcome to Coffee with Me and Jesus. It's been a few days since I have been on, but it's been enjoyable with the time that I had with my family to enjoy the season of Thanksgiving. And I trust that everyone took the time to truly ponder and be thankful. That spirit of Thanksgiving is still in a wave this morning. I was on the phone with my son and we were just praying and giving God glory. And I was recalling a time when I didn't even have money that I was ch uh, counting change on my kitchen table uh, to buy a loaf of bread. And I was praying and I said, Lord, don't ever, ever take that memory from me. Don't, do not ever let me forget where I came from and where I am today because God has truly blessed me. But I definitely know what it's like to be on the lower end of the spectrum where you were thankful that you even had a car like my son and I were praying and that it even ran. And the big one was that you could even have afford to have gas to put in your vehicle to go where you needed to go. So God has been a, a God that is that I am so thankful. I'm so thankful that the things that he has done in my life. And I pray that that wave of thankfulness will just continue and aspire us to look every day and be thankful for what God has given us. Amen. Well, we have been in Matthew and we're in chapter five. And today we are in <clears throat> verse 17 and I will read it. And this is where we're going to pick up. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not to I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you till heaven and earth pass one jot or one title shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So then I want us to focus, there's so much in the book of Matthew, and I love Matthew because it is Jesus himself speaking to us. We are getting the direct uh, interpretation of the law, and that's what Jesus meant when he said that he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law, because to fulfill means to bring into completion or reality means to carry it out. And Jesus was prophesied by the men of old that he was coming. And Jesus is saying, I, uh, I'm not coming to say that there is no good of the law or the law should not even sp be spoken of. I'm coming in to teach you what is truly what the law is truly about and that's verified in the book of acts because i told you on the little commentary there's always scripture to verify and bring witness to the word and in acts 13 39 it says and by him meaning jesus all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So the, the law of Moses, the Torah, Torah, I apologize, the Torah, which is the Old Testament where the laws were set for the people and, uh, and that's what they tried to live by the best that they knew how, but they just, it wasn't happening because sometimes when you just lay laws for people, they don't follow them. But if they understand, and the reason why the law was made then they can they they have a greater understanding and they're more apt to follow that so that's what Jesus is saying I I'm coming so that you can understand the law and I am the one that's going to fulfill the law for you that's why Jesus goes in and he teaches what the the law is written he teaches us through many many parables a uh clear understanding of what is written and in Romans 10 4 it says Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth so that is saying that Christ that he's the end of the law 
There is no more law after Christ. He has come because he's fulfilled the law. And his, the only way that can, we can be reconciled back to the Father is through Jesus Christ. All of our sins, because man still sins, and the only, there had to be one perfect sacrifice and that it would make us righteous before God and justified before God. And the only way that could happen was that Jesus Christ came and he fulfilled the law, and he made a way for us to be right standing with God, taking all our sins and making a way for us. And there's no other way, no other way to the Father but through Jesus Christ. That's why it says the Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So we have to believe in order to obtain this justification and righteousness with our father jesus is the restorer and the redeemer and the only way to the father and in galatians 3 24 i love this one the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to christ that's why jesus says i'm not come to get away with the law the law is a schoolmaster it's a teachings that are going to bring us uh, to Christ because everything that is prophesied and taught all fast forwards us into Christ coming and Christ is now here and he's going to teach us, continue to teach us the fulfillment of the law, bring it the, the fulfillment of the law through his death whereby we can be justified and made righteous in God's eyes to be a holy people, holy and presentable and pure before our Father. Only through Christ can that be because he took all our sins to the cross and that is how we are able to repent of all our sins and, and be able to be justified and found righteous in God's eyes. And that was pro and the the completion of that scripture is the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ by prophets of old that we might be justified by faith. So in what I just explained is what the scripture is saying. There is only one way, people, that we can be made righteous and be justified through Christ uh, to God. And it's through Christ. And only by our faith can we even believe this to be so. Because in the natural, it is just impossible to believe that this man came from a God that sits out there and born of a virgin. And now he's our savior. That is just impossible in human understanding. It doesn't make any sense. It, it just, it, it, you cannot believe that. You will not believe that unless God has given you that portion when you read this and you believe and you have faith. That is the only way that you can believe and have faith to then inherit this right standing with God and be justified through Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, and know that he has paid the price once and for all. So Jesus in, in these two verses 17 and 18 is explaining who he is and why he has come and what the outcome of his, his ministry here on earth and his purpose here on earth is for those who believe in Christ. So we are, like I said, these, are th these things may seem elementary to some of us, but we are going over them because we want to lay a firm foundation. God is wanting his people to know the truth, not to know anything else but the truth. And the only way that we can know the truth is to read what is written and it to be imparted through the Holy Spirit that our minds will be open and expanded and we will know that it is true and our faith will justify us before the Father. And the only way, once again, is through Jesus Christ. 
So that is our little message for today. And it's not a little message. It's a, we must understand. We have to understand the fullness of the gospel so that we can go forth and be, when we start to be witnesses and disciples to other other people, that we have all our facts straight. And that's why we're walking through the life of Jesus in the book of Matthew. So this has been really fun. And once again, I am so thankful to be back on here. And I pray that you share my page with others. And I have a little time left. So let's just go into prayer. And let's see what the Lord just brings us. Amen. Okay, so people, let's first of all, prepare ourselves to be in that place of thankfulness. Amen. Father, we just thank you, God. We thank you, and I just ask you, Father, to bring back to remembrance every viewer where you have intervened by your Spirit and you have shown up to be a God of restoration, a God of provision, a God of abundance, a God that has healed our broken hearts, heard our cries and brought us out of the dark place that we would look back, God, and reflect and now understand today that, yes, I know you are real because you delivered me from sickness. You delivered me from poverty. You delivered me when I my heart was broken and you healed a relationship or you gave me the strength to move on. Maybe you delivered me from drugs. Maybe you delivered me from gambling. Maybe you delivered me from a gossiping tongue. Maybe you delivered me from anger. Maybe you delivered me from hate. But Father, the truth is, is, Lord, I was delivered because I believed in your word and I cried out to you. And today, Father, I am thankful. I am thankful, God, for all that you have given me. Father, I pray that you bless all the viewers, God. Send your spirit because you said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I pray that you will saturate your people today with your spirit. And your spirit is a spirit of truth, Father, that that truth will fall on your sons and daughters and your children. And if they have, and they have sinned because we all fall short of your glory, Lord. But our sins, Lord, that we would not take lightly the coming of Jesus Christ that bore all our sins on the cross, that we would repent, repent of our sin, and that we would follow and do what is right and seek you, Father, and know that you are incorporated into every phase of our life. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. People, I come on to my mark again, so have a blessed day. Rejoice and be glad, for this is a day that the Lord has made. Share my page. Amen. Bye-bye now.